Okay, you guys, here in chapter 16, we're going to look at accounting uh, for income taxes, or really, how do we handle income tax expense and income tax payable in the journal entry for those uh, on, the, uh, on the books. Um, I thought we'd go through a few terms and I'll talk about it a little bit in the lecture video before we started through the problems. You really have two types of income, you guys, and you're aware of this already, but you've got pre-tax accounting income or what I call book income, and that's just your income before income tax number and it's pulled from the income statement. Now that number is prepared or calculated using generally accepted accounting principles. You also have taxable income pulled from the tax return. Now that number is calculated using IRS laws and regulations, or IRS rules. Okay, so normally these two amounts are going to be different. because this number was calculated using generally accepted accounting principles and this uh, number was calculated using the tax code. Okay, there are two reasons why these numbers are different uh, when we get into more specific terms. There could be permanent differences in the two. So for instance, um, if, you, if a company earns interest on city bonds or municipal bonds, well, that would be a part of their net income or income on the books. But municipal bond interest is never taxable. So it would not be included in taxable income. That's a permanent difference there. If a corporation decides to pay life insurance on key life insurance key premiums on key executives, they can deduct that expense as insurance expense or maybe compensation expense on the financial statements in coming to net income. But that's not uh, deductible as an expense in coming to taxable income on the tax return. That creates a permanent difference. Now any permanent differences before we make our income tax expense calculation, any permanent differences have to be taken out of this pre-tax uh, accounting income or book income number and we'd either add them uh, add them back if they'd been deducted or deduct them if they'd been added in before multiplying by the tax rate. Uh, so we'd have to take out the effect of any permanent differences before making our income tax expense calculation. The ones we're going to focus on mainly are temporary differences. The most common place this comes up, you guys, is a lot of businesses might use straight line depreciation in, calculation to, in calculating depreciation expense on the income statement. But on the tax return, we use MAKERS, or Modified Accelerated Cost Recovery System, uh, in uh, calculating depreciation expense. So a lot of times there's a difference there. But it's only a temporary difference because, let's say it's a useful life of five years, over the five-year period, we're going to take the same amount of depreciation on the income statement as we do on the tax return. It's just in a given year, it's different. These temporary differences will work themselves out over time, but, um, okay, so these temporary differences we were talking about, you guys, the di uh, which creates a difference in income tax expense and uh, income tax payable. The expense is what we're going to deduct from income on the income statement. Income tax payable is a liability we owe to the IRS. The ones that are caused by temporary differences in book income and taxable income, they create either a deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability. So what we do, we debit income tax expense for the correct amount. We credit income tax payable for the correct amount. If we need more debit to balance the entry, we have a deferred tax asset. If we need more credit to balance the entry, we have a deferred tax liability. And, and you're going to see those entries a few times here. Um, okay, guys, I, I think that pretty well covers it. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please be in touch. 
and I think this will help you in uh, these exercises we're about to uh, take a look at. Um, thanks and good luck.